Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to bring you a haul and I know what you're saying. Cheryl, didn't you just upload an unhaul video? Didn't you just talk about the fact that you want to move with less books? And you're right. Um, my justification for this haul is one, I know I'll enjoy these books and two, I'm hauling less books than I'm unhauling so at least there's that. Otherwise, Without further ado, let's just get into these books. There's not that many of them. All right, so this first book is the only book that I'm like, <laughs> maybe I made a mistake buying it, and that's The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton. I got this at Goodwill, and like, it's hardcover, and it's in really good condition, and I've heard decent things about this. Some people have had mixed reviews, but overall, I've heard pretty good things about it. Don't really know what it's about, but it sounds like, I don't know the exact premise, but I know it's like historical fiction historical fantasy. I think there's fantastical elements in it. I'm not 100% sure, but I will be picking this up at some point probably. But this cover though, I mean, nice to have this cover, even though I'm not a collector of books. I enjoy this cover nonetheless. And on the opposite end of that cover is one that's crazy, and that is R.A. Salvatore's The Servant of the Shard. This is a Forgotten Realms book, which is if you have not heard me talk about this before, it's kind of a little difficult to explain. Basically, it is a series of series. <laughs> the Forgotten Realms is like one of the canon and lores for D&D. There are a few different that people can follow, but the Forgotten Realms specifically is a, I think, I don't know if it started off as D&D lore and then became a book series or if they kind of went in conjunction with one another, but basically it is a bunch of different trilogies or series, but no more than usually four books um, that expand this world and explain these characters. The first one is um, right here, and that is going to be the um, Drizzt trilogy, the Dark Elf trilogy, and the first three follow Drizzt specifically, explain his backstory, where he came from, what he does. Um, each trilogy, I believe, follows different characters. I'm not 100% sure. So I saw this and I was like, well, I'm trying to read this series. I don't know the next time I'm going to pick up or find one of these books. Also, look at this cover. Like, oh man, oh man. I don't know if you can see this or if there's a glare, but man. Is that not a crazy fantasy cover? But um, I didn't know when I would find one of these again. And uh, I realized after I uh, looked at the inside of their, that one, which tells you the different books in the series and the order, this one is like, I think in like the fifth or sixth series within this general universe. So it's gonna be a while till I get to it. Um, but I have it now, I don't have to buy it. And uh, yeah, I've obviously avoided looking at the back or the flap of this one because I've read the first book in the Dark Elf trilogy. This is like 15 books into this, this general series, this general universe. Don't want to spoil myself, so yeah, but now I own it and I got it also at Goodwill for very cheap. So this next one is one I got at Barnes & Noble because my husband and I had like a big Valentine's Day -y kind of weekend because it was like the one year anniversary of us getting engaged, so mm, romance and all that fun stuff. And we went to Barnes & Noble and we found quite a few books. This first one is one that I saw at Barnes & Noble once and I was like, I'm gonna get this. But then I put it down and then I never could find it again. And then I found it again and it was still bargain price. So obviously I decided to pick it up and that is The Dinosaur Feather by oh, the, by S.J. Gazan, Gazan. And I don't really know much about this, but there's an Archaeopteryx on the cover, so I am here for it. If you are new to my channel, as many of you are, you may not know this about me, but I really love dinosaurs. Like, mm, I wanted to be a paleontologist, but there's a lot of schooling that goes into that, and uh, the girl didn't feel like getting a PhD yet, so. But I was interested in this book. I'm not 100% sure if it's sci-fi, like a sci-fi thriller the way like Jurassic Park is or if it's just a mystery because I know there's a murder but I don't know it says this award-winning debut crime thriller is a classic of Scandinavian noir from its richly imagined and deeply flawed characters to its scintillating exploration of one of the most fascinating aspects of dinosaur and aviation research or avian research um, I don't know like I said if there's gonna be sci-fi elements to this like with genetic engineering but I love books like Jurassic Park and Genetic Engineering and uh, this one was like six bucks but I'm a Barnes & Noble member so I got it even cheaper than that and uh, like I said, an Archaeopteryx on the cover. I'm here for it. I love dinosaurs so much. So these next ones, the next uh, three books are also all books that I got from Barnes & Noble and they're all specifically like collector's editions because 
I really love displaying books and so does my husband. Even though my husband doesn't read very much, we both like and appreciate very aesthetically pleasing books, as many people do. And this next one is um, dark fantasy um, Lovecraft short stories. I'm not 100% sure if you're going to be able to read this whatsoever. I'm going to have to like kind of shift it back and forth. And you can see it's like foiled with like really dark gr uh, green, almost like the Slytherin green, all over this really nice black. It's like a hardcover uh, with no dust jacket and it's got these nice gold insides and the back is also foiled. Apparently they're they're coming out with uh, these new collector's editions because they know I'm trash for them. And I specifically collect Lovecraft books. Um, Lovecraft is one of my favorite authors, objectively speaking. I mean, I know he's racist. I know his stories like are problematic to the umpteenth degree sometimes. However, I really love the horror stories he has created and I love his mythos and so I collect the books. I have this one, I have their regular like leather bound edition and I have a couple other random smaller editions but this one is just gorgeous. Now this just says it's a selection of nightmarish short stories from the innovator of cosmic horror, weird fiction, and the Cthulhu mythology H.P. Lovecraft including such tales as the Dunwich Horror, The Color Out of Space, or and The Color Out of Space, Lovecraft's fertile imagination and chilling creation inspired writers like um, Robert Block, Bloke, Robert E. Howard, and Clark Ashton Smith, who are also featured here. Oh, that's nifty, so maybe it's not just Lovecraft stuff? I don't know. I already own these all of these stories in multiple editions, but I couldn't pass this one up. They also have different stories in this. I think they had one that was the Penny Dreadfuls. Um, I don't know if they have classics like Dracula and Frankenstein in this one, but I know they had one that was specifically like Irish um, and Celtic mythology and like some of the other ones and ghost stories. So I definitely gonna, am going to want to pick up some of these editions in the future. It was also only like 12 books with my and then I've got the additional membership price off of it so I'm here for it look forward to seeing some of these in the future maybe if I can get my hands on them because they're so beautiful I really hope this is showing up in camera because oh my god in person it's gorgeous it's gorgeous also a collector's or this next one is also a collector's edition not quite as pretty as the previous one and that is the Penny Dreadfuls um this is compiled by someone whose name is covered so that's fun Murder, body snatching, torture, premature burial, and cannibalism. Oh, it's not a fancy cover. I was hoping it was. Oh, all right. So this is just a collection of stories. The Penny Dreadfuls, which I think, did they make a show out of it? I think so. We're just, I believe, like horror stories, like sensational stories that were published. And it says in the 19th century, um, they were cheaply printed in, in inexpensive publications written to titillate the masses uh, with shocking thrills and lurid horrors. So this is a compilation of some of them. I don't know exactly how many Penny Dreadfuls were ever written, but this is it's 20 shocking sensation stories from the Victoria era. This first one is specifically why my husband wanted this book uh, because he wanted to read it and that is The String of Pearls or Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street. I have not read that story either so I look forward to it. Then there's Frankenstein, um, The Diary of a Madman, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and Lost in a Pyramid or The Mummy's Curse by Louisa May Alcott. I look forward to picking up some of these. Um, this is the kind of book that I don't think you I would read cover to cover um, in one sitting or like just in one go. I feel like I pick up a story here, I pick up a story there. The cover's fun. It's like one of their also like their big compilation collection type things. Barnes & Noble has so many of those now. Like I didn't know that they, they know we like to collect books don't they? Which like I said I'm not the biggest bookish collector but they just they keep coming out with different collections and that's the only way they can get away with like having the same book printed like five different ways that they I'm just trash for. They print the Lovecraft stories in five different ways. I'm going to buy them. I'm sorry. I'm trash. All right. So this last one is one that if you watch my unhaul, you know I got rid of this book because I bought this new version and I like it so much better. And that is going to be Dracula by Bram Stoker. Um, got like sticker residue on here. That's the one thing I hate. And this is in their like fake leather bound edition collection, which if you go to Barnes and Noble, like the physical store, they usually have it up near the registers or at least all the Barnes and Nobles I've been have it. And they, that collection was really small at first. It was like the Lovecraft, it was Jurassic Park. Um, 
I also have a Winnie the Pooh in that edition, but now they have expanded so much and I just want all of them. This one in particular is a little different because it's not, um, it's not like that hard cover. It's like a flimsy kind of soft cover. It's really strange, but I enjoy this book because it's so aesthetic. Like look at this cover and then the black pages and then it also comes with like all of their editions do. It comes with, it comes with like the ribbon bookmarker and that is just everything about this book is so pretty and it was only ten dollars like if if you buy books at full price frequently you know how expensive they get and so for the only to be ten dollars and it to be this beautiful like i said i'm not like a big book collector but i really did enjoy dracula i listened to it on audiobook and it's one of my husband's favorites as well so this is one i'm definitely like willing to have a decorative edition of the back just says listen to them the children of the night what music they make yes i just mm, this book is so pretty i look forward to possibly picking up some other classics i don't know i'm not a huge fan of classics which i know shocking scandalous whatever but I, I'm just, if I can get them in this edition, <laughs> I'm here for it. Ugh. I don't know if I'll ever pick this up to read it because, like I said, I've already read the book and it's, I don't particularly like rereading. I mean, look at the inside too. All parts of this is pretty. God damn it, Barnes & Noble, you're taking all my money. Anyway, that is my haul for, I guess this is like a very end of January, beginning of February haul. I've said it before on my channel, but I don't typically do monthly hauls because I don't buy books that frequently. Some months I might buy none. I might buy no, no books, none books. I might buy no books. Some uh, months I might buy five. Like, it's so inconsistent because I don't have the money to just go on book outlet and buy a bunch of books at once. I also don't have the shelf space for it, so. But thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I... I'm looking forward to picking up some of these, especially like the Sweeney Todd story because like I said, I haven't read it before. So I look forward to picking it up. I'm quite familiar with the adaptation uh, musical. So yeah, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see all of you guys in my next video. Bye.